بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Imam Zayd Shakir and I'm here to uh, introduce you to this program This program is a four-part series which we're entitling The Purpose of Life We're going to examine just some of the basic fundamental uh, knowledge associated with understanding what it means to live in this world, what are the implications of living in this world, what is the purpose for living in this world, and what is our ultimate destination. Is this world indeed our final destination, or is this deed a way station on our way to our final destination? What is the, the nature of our relationship with others, with ourselves, with our Lord, with other denizens of this place. These are issues we wish to explore and, and ultimately really focusing and honing in on the fact that this world is the abode of trials and tribulations and that, that this is the nature of the place. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu karram Allahu wajha is reported to have said Man dunya hanat musibat. One who understands or knows the nature of this world, calamities become easy to deal with. And so we, we're, we're going to uh, try to examine what is the nature of this world? What is the nature of our relationship with this world? And what should we be focusing on? So today we want to start with examining two things. Examining the characteristics of this world and the characteristics of the Akhirah. Why is that, brothers and sisters? We start here because we live in this world, undeniably, and in this phase of our human uh, development, which was preceded by another phase in the womb, which was preceded by the, the genetic phase and the genetic makeup of our forebears, all the way back to Adam, alayhi salam and there's a phase after this world. But in this phase, we live in this world. But we live for the next. We live for the akhirah. We live for the unseen world. Sometimes this world is called a dunya because it's low and accessible. Allah Ta'ala describes the fruits of Jannah, kutufuha daniya, that the clusters of fruit will be hanging low, easy to access, easy to pluck easy to enjoy and so this world is readily accessible through our senses we can touch it we can see it we can feel it we can smell it we can hear it we can taste it so it's readily accessible we cannot do any of that for the akhirah and so it's called the akhirah that which will come later that which comes at the end if that which succeeds our life in this world. Sometimes this world is called the ajila, uh, excuse me, the ajila, the ajila, that which is quick. It comes quick, as we said, it's readily accessible. And the hereafter is called al ajila, that which is delayed or deferred. And so that, this is where we're starting today. And as this is Ramadan, Shah Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن, we want to root what we say in the Quran. So we want to examine or look at some of the characteristics of the world from the Quran. So the first characteristic is that uh, this world is brief. This worldly life is brief. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويوم تقوم الساعة يقسم المجرمون يقسم المجرمون ما لبثوا غير ساعة كذلك كانوا يؤفكون And when the hour is established, the criminals will swear, the wrongdoers will swear that we only tarried in this world, we only lingered in this world for a brief moment. Thus, are they, thus were they deceived, or thus were they deluded concerning their life in the world, which preceded the Day of Judgment. And so the, the idea of brevity, this world is brief. 
as one of our forebears says, forebears mentioned at dunya sa'a faj'alha ta'a wa nafsu tamami'a adnimha qana'a that the, the, this world is but a moment. Fill that moment with the obedience to Allah Ta'ala. And the nafs is covetous, is greedy. Teach it contentment. To be content with what it has. Alhamdulillah. But what preceded this world, as we said, from our coming out of the womb of our mother to pre-eternity, back to pre-eternity. How much time was that compared to this world? And what comes after this world? To eternity. Dwelling therein. And we pray everyone will dwell permanently in heaven at the end of our warfare. Well, how much is, how much time preceded us? And how much time comes after us? compared to our time in this world. Our time in this world is very brief, brothers and sisters. Fill that moment with the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second description is the world is the abode of sport, amusement, play, frivolities, adornment, boasting between ourselves, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد And the verse goes on, but the relevant points here, you should know that the, this worldly life is sport and play, amusement, Adornment, mutual boasting between yourselves and piling up wealth and children. That's the life of this world for those who don't truly understand it. But the hereafter is the real life. And we'll come to that momentarily, inshallah ta'ala. And so, brothers and sisters, don't be obsessed with those things. Don't be obsessed with those things. The world is an abode of deception. We're deluded, we're deceived, we misperceive because of the nature of the world. Allah Ta'ala says in that regard, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّ وَعَدُ اللَّهِ حَقُّ إِنَّ وَعَدُ اللَّهِ حَقُّ فَلَا تَغُرَنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ So Allah Ta'ala says, O oh, oh people, humanity, addressing all of us, Muslims, Jews, Christians, atheists, Buddhists, Hindus, you name it, all of us are being addressed. O oh, humanity, humankind, you should know that the promise of Allah is true. That promise of Allah doesn't just pertain to Muslims. The promise of Allah pertains to all of humanity. The threat of Allah doesn't just pertain to Muslims. The threat of Allah pertains to all of humanity. Muslims are threatened in particular ways. Those who are scholars are threatened in particular enhanced ways because they should know better in terms of what sort of life they should be living, what sort of sins they should be avoiding. But he says, Azawajal, mighty and majestic is he. O oh, humanity, verily the promise of Allah is truth, true, so do not be deceived by the life of this world, this worldly life, and do not be, be, do not be, be, do not be deceived concerning Allah by the great deceiver, Shaitan, Satan. The life of this world is an abode of straying and tyranny. Allah Ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَلَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ سُنْعَا Those who are astray, whose striving in this world is astray, and all the while they think that they're doing good, they're deceived. They think that their straying is guidance. 
And how many people in our time, in our day and time, are afflicted with that disease of the heart? Being deceived, thinking that all oh, things that this ummah, this community of Muslims throughout its entire history has declared to be unlawful or forbidden or sinful are deceived into believing is totally fine, it's all right. Don't be deceived, brothers and sisters, by the life of this world. The life of this world, we mentioned, is, is a tyranny. As for one who, one who behaves tyrannically and prefers the life of this world, verily, hellfire will be his or her final abode. Don't be deceived, brothers and sisters, by this world. Don't, be, be, don't behave tyrannically in this world. Allah Ta'ala has made the akhirah for those who humble themselves, for those who do not desire to exalt themselves in the world. And in the verse that mentions these three realities, the end is for those, the righteous. The righteous are those who do not desire to exalt themselves in the world, nor to co work corruption therein. The implication of that, those who desire to exalt themselves in the world, they do the share, the lion's share of the corruption and putting things out of their pro proper balance. And this is coming in the description of the Akhirah. تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ أُلُوهًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا this is the home of the hereafter. We may for those who don't desire to exalt themselves in the earth nor to work corruption therein. And the end will be for the righteous. So the ones who behave tyrannically, they are sub uh, succumbing to the enticement of the world the enticement of the world, giving the impression that fa a false power. And look, look, at, look at how Allah Ta'ala destroys that perception. Like there were those boasting, we, we have the greatest economy in human history, as if that, that was their doing, and not a test from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Two weeks later, three weeks later, 30 million people filing for unemployment, that great greatest economy in human history, totally undone, totally undone because of something microscopic. We can't even see it with the naked eye. We cannot see this coronavirus with the naked eye. Don't be deceived. Don't, be, don't behave tyrannical, tyrannically. The, the servants of Allah, of the merciful, are those who walk humbly in the earth. They walk humbly in the earth. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysir and kabul. The nature of this world is that it's, the, uh, it's an abode for debasement for those who don't do righteousness, who don't work righteousness, who don't commit themselves to caring and sharing, caring for and sharing with their fellow human beings and the other creatures that they send uh, share this world, uh, this earth with. Allah Ta'ala says in that regard, And so Allah gave them a taste of humiliation in this world. A taste because what they will f experience in the Akhirah will be the full course meal. And no matter how wretched, their, how debasing their punishment, no matter how painful their punishment in this world, if Allah chooses to begin their punishment in this world, what they will experience in the Akhirah is, cannot be compared in terms of its severity and intensity. So Allah says, uh, 
and the and the tor the torment the punishment of the hereafter is greater if they only knew why if they only knew it would be a check on their actions brothers and sisters this is not the adventures of huck finn and tom sawyer this is not adventure the quran is not adventure literature it's not the iliad and the odyssey it's not a novel it is guidance from the Lord of the world that we as believers are obliged to follow. And if we follow it, we won't be humiliated in this world. We will be elevated, not because of our own ego's desire, illusion of strength or power, but be owing to the mercy and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. This world, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. It's the abode of Allahumma salli ala Rasulillah of earning good. So this world, brothers and sisters, understand this. What we get from the world is intricately associated with how we approach the world. So our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ad-dunya mal'una. The world is cursed. He says, at dunya mata, the world is a source of benefit. So which is it? It's up to us. If we, uh, if we violate the commandments of Allah in the world, if we worship the world, if we are obsessed with the wherewithal of the world, if we don't give the rights that, are, that we owe to others in the world, then the world is cursed. But if we use the world, to the, the second uh, reference, part of a, a, a brief hadith, where our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, dunya wa khayru al -saliha. The world is a source of benefit, and the most beneficial thing in it is a virtuous spouse. And so if, if we work together with our spouses to assist each other in our journey to the akhirah, the world is a, is, a, is a source of benefit. So rather it's cursed. So there's no contradiction. Someone say, oh, al-dunya mal'una. Mal'una ma fihi. Amma fiha. Ila dhikrullah. Man wala. Kama qal. So we say, oh, it's cursed. It's a benefit. There's a contradiction. There's no contradiction. It depends on how we approach it. If we approach it in the wrong way, it's cursed. And if we approach it properly, it's a source of great benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in terms of accruing benefit, so Allah Ta'ala says, Say to my servants who believe, Be mindful of your Lord. For those who do good in this world, they will have good. And the earth of Allah is spacious. And rather, the patient ones are giving their, their reward with no numerical limits. Be lady, he said. And so Allah Ta'ala reminds us that this world is a source of good for us if we approach it the right way. And that the earth of Allah is spacious, meaning what? If we can't do good over here, then we move over there to do good. If you can't do good in America, I mean, America is so much pressure, except especially you know, the coronavirus, how am I supposed to focus on Allah? How can I even pray? I'm constantly distracted. Where is Allah when we need him? If that's what your state is, you need to go somewhere else where people are not in that state and join them in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as was the case of the man who killed the 99 people. He immediately took the advice of the scholar and tried to go to the land where there were good people to worship Allah with them. Ardullahi wasi'a. In another verse, Ardullahi, ar, 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 Ardullahi wasi'a. Fatuhajiru fiha. 
Allah's earth is spacious, migrate therein. There is no excuse not to do good. And alhamdulillah, we can do much good here in America. We have an incredible opportunity to live a righteous life. You might not find this in Europe. There's a lot of anti-Muslim pressure in Europe. Someone say there's a lot here, but there's no comparison, my brothers and sisters, where, where the laws that are being legislated, where they have a, a lay, a laicism as opposed to secularism. So secularism, no religion in the public space, laicism, no religion at all, anti-religious. So may Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq, chaisir, and kabul. And finally, and I'll stop here because I took more time than I, I anticipated. The next uh, section will, well, let me see the time here. Yes, took more time. Uh, but this is the most important one because this is the one after we deal with the characteristics of the Akhirah in the next section, we're going to focus on the trials, the nature of the world in terms of it being the abode of trials and tribulations. So the final thing mentioned here, and I'm, I'm going through this based on the arrangement of a text called Nadrat al-Naim fi makarim al-akhlaq al-Rasul al-Kareem. So uh, the glow of the garden concerning the beautiful characteristic of the noble prophet. And so the final one uh, mentioned here is the abode of trials and tribulations, darul ibtila. So Allah Ta'ala says in that regard, A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim Tabarak al-ladhi biyadihi al-mulk Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir Al-ladhi khalaq al-mawt wal-hayata liyabalwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala Wa huwa al-aziz wal-ghafur so blessed is the one in whose hand is the, the, the dominion of all things and he over all things has power. The one who has created death and life to test you, which of you are best indeed. And he is the mighty, the forgiving. La ilaha illallah. Death is mentioned first here because death is probably the greatest tribulation in this life. Aladhi khalaq al who created death, wal hayata, and life, and the tribulations of life that precede death are far less are lesser than death. The yabluwakum ayyukum ahsinu amala to test you and try you which of you are best indeed. So that's the nature of the world. There are many verses in this regard, but we'll come to those uh, after we uh, deal with the characteristics of the akhirana. Uh, next uh, session. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, that remind, remind you and remind myself as we started, we live in the world, but we live for the Akhirah. And we open with the saying of Imam Ali and Arafat Dunya Hanat Alihim Musribat, and we'll conclude with a saying sometimes attributed to Imam Ali also, Radiallahu Anhu Karamallahu Wacha, Irtahat Dunya. وَرَأَكُمْ مُدْبِرَةً وَارْتَلْحَتِ الْآخِرَةِ أَمَامَكَ مُقْبِلَةً وَلِكُلٍ مِنْهُمَا أَبْنَاءَهُ فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا So the the world is behind you moving away from you and so that's the nature of the world and you notice most of these very few in terms of the world uh there were disincentives it was uh tarheeb encouraging us not to be amongst the criminal wrongdoers encouraging us not to be deceived uh encouraging us so it's it's warning against the negative impact the world can have why? Because it's moving away. It's moving away, which means what? We will never catch it. So Allah Ta'ala is trying to warn us, don't be obsessed with chasing something you will never catch. Don't be obsessed with chasing something you will never catch. 
أن آخرة وارتحلت الآخرة أمامك مقبلة and the akhirah is in front of you, moving towards you, meaning you will never escape it. And so the akhirah, when we get to that in the next section, you see most of the verses are encouragements, targhib, encouraging us to long for the akhirah. Why? Because it will, we're not going to escape it. So as opposed to running away from the akhirah and running towards the world, which is insanity, because we'll never catch the world, no matter how hard we try, no matter how fast we run, and we'll never escape the akhirah. And so we are discouraged from chasing the world. And so most of the verses we went over today are tarheeb. And we're encouraged to look forward to and be open to an approach and run to the akhirah. Fafiru il Allah, flee to Allah. That's the nature of things, brothers and sisters. Don't be deceived. I took too much time. May Allah bless you. Bless all of you. This is Imam Zayd Shah here, the first installment of this class, The Purpose of Life. Jazakumullah khayran barakallahu fikum. We yataqabbal minkum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.